So we have a stick man here that we're going to do some thought experiments with. So the first experiment we're going to do is we're going to imagine what would happen if we were to remove his kidneys and allow him to continue drinking. So he's got his glass of water here and he's drinking the water. It's going into his gastrointestinal tract and the water is being absorbed into his blood. Now, normally the kidneys would then be responsible for peeing out the same amount of water as he is absorbing in through his gastrointestinal tract. But if we have removed his kidneys, that's not going to happen. And instead, the amount of water inside his body is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, initially, the water is absorbed into the blood, so the blood volume increases. However, as the blood volume gets bigger and bigger, that fluid is going to seep out into the interstitial fluid, so all of the tissues of his body are going to become swollen with fluid also. So I've drawn this rather crudely by showing him now swollen up like so. So his arms and his legs and even his torso, all of that tissue is going to become swollen. The muscles, the subcutaneous fat, all of it's going to get more swollen. This is a condition called fluid overload. This man is effectively overhydrated. Now, another experiment. Let's take the same man, let's not remove his kidneys this time, and let's take that glass of water away from him. Let's stop him from being able to drink or eat anything. So stop him from being able to consume any water, and let's stop him to being able to do that for 48 hours, two days. Now, he will continue to produce urine because his body is still producing waste products that need to be excreted in the urine. So some water is still going to be excreted from his body to produce that urine. Now, of course, the kidneys are very good at making the urine more and more concentrated in times when water is more scarce. But fundamentally, some water is still required and therefore he is going to be losing water from his body. So we're going to be putting no water in and this time losing water what's going to happen. Of course, he's going to become dehydrated, again, quite crudely shown by this picture in which he's become thinner. So, of course, what will happen is, as you're losing water from the body, the blood volume will initially go down, but then that will cause fluid to leave the interstitial compartment and go back into the depleted intravascular compartment, and therefore all of the tissues of your body are going to become less hydrated, more dehydrated. So the arms and the legs will become thinner as water is leached from the muscles and the subcutaneous fat tissue and all other tissues as well. So we did that thought experiment to understand what fluid overload and what dehydration are. And now we will use this to understand the drug furosemide. So furosemide is a drug that can be given orally or intravenously. Dose-wise, the tablets usually contain around 40 milligrams, and intravenous injections usually come in vials that contain 50 milligrams. And this is a drug that works on the kidneys and stimulates them to produce a much larger volume of urine than they would normally produce, so stimulates them to excrete much higher quantities of water than they normally would. So a third thought experiment now. So let's suppose we take a young, healthy individual. So let's say this is a 20-year-old male with no comorbidities. We're going to allow him to eat and drink as normal. And for the sake of science, we are going to give him furosemide. And we want to answer what's going to happen. So we'll give him 40 milligrams of furosemide just orally. And we want to think about what is that actually going to do to this man. The answer is that it's going to dehydrate him, it's going to turn him into this down here. And the reason is he'll take the drug, it'll go to his kidneys, stimulate them to excrete much more water than they should be. And they were healthy functioning kidneys that were excreting the right amount of water. So they were going to excrete the same amount as he was absorbing from his gastrointestinal tract to keep him nicely fluid balanced. But now with this drug they're going to be hyperactive, they're going to excrete much more water so they're going to dehydrate him, they're going to excrete more water than he's consumed and absorbed. So he will end up dehydrated even though he is consuming a normal amount of water through food and drink. And even if 
he were to up his consumption of water, so say he realises what this drug is doing to him, gets thirsty and drinks more water than normal, because of the drug, all of that water is just going to be peed out, urinated out, so he will remain in the dehydrated state until the drug actually wears off. So dehydration is not healthy. It's not healthy for all the organs of the body to be dehydrated. So this drug is really not going to be healthy for this young man. It would not be an advisable medical thing to do to put him on furosemide. It's going to be detrimental to his health rather than help his health. So who is actually going to be helped by this drug? Who do we actually prescribe this drug to? Well, the answer is people who are fluid overloaded. So obviously we had our first thought experiment where we imagined removing someone's kidneys and then we understood that they would go into a state of fluid overload because they're not actually able to excrete any of the water out of them. Now that type of fluid overload or that mechanism of fluid overload is not going to be able to be treated with furosemide because the drug fundamentally works by stimulating the kidneys to hyper excrete water. Now, of course, if he's had his kidneys removed, this drug is going to do absolutely nothing. So our first thought experiment man is not going to be helped by furosemide at all. He needs a kidney transplant, and if that's not available, dialysis to remove the fluid. However, there are other conditions, one in particular important one to know about, that can cause a state of fluid overload and which can be treated with furosemide. So that condition is obviously heart failure. This is the main condition that results in fluid overload and which we treat with furosemide. So heart failure is a complicated condition. It is the name for when problems with the heart causes someone to become fluid overloaded. So you would diagnose someone with heart failure if they are in this fluid overloaded state and it is due not to a problem with the kidneys or some other complicated cause of fluid overload, but instead is due to a problem with the heart. When that is the case, you would diagnose that individual with heart failure. So time for a fourth thought experiment now, and it's another horrible one. So we're going to take our healthy 20-year-old male here who can eat and drink whatever he likes, and we're going to damage his heart and give him heart failure. How could we do that? Well, one example of how we could do that is we could give him a cardiotoxic drug. So in the realm of oncology, which is the medical speciality that treats cancer, there are a huge number of drugs known as chemotherapy agents that are used to treat cancer. And these are very toxic drugs. They're poisons. They have to be poisons in order to kill the cancer cells. And there are a bunch of those that are particularly toxic to the cells of the heart, we call these cardiotoxic drugs. So we could give our healthy 20-year-old male one of these cardiotoxic drugs in order to damage his heart. So let's suppose, hypothetically, that we do this awful thing. We give him the drug, it damages his heart, what then happens? So for reasons that are not completely understood, when people have heart problems, the kidneys start retaining fluid they stop secreting as much water into the urine. So they under-excrete water. There are many models as to why this happens. Each of those models has as many holes in it as the next, and I don't actually find any of them particularly helpful for understanding this process. Instead, I prefer to just accept that this is a phenomenon that happens, that when people have heart problems, the kidneys under-excrete fluid and people become fluid overloaded.